And we're back. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Hey, Jimmy, say hello to the good peoples. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. Um, so you were working at Hart and Huntington down in Florida? Yeah. I moved down to Florida probably about just, uh, just the end of December, beginning of January. How's it treating you down there? Uh, much better than, than Vegas did. <laughs> uh, I like it better here. It's definitely, a, it's definitely a better environment to raise a family in. Yeah, I, mean, I can understand that. Vegas could probably be a little crazy. It can be. You know, I think uh, if you're a single person ready to get nuts and crazy, I think it's definitely a, that's definitely a place to to kind of uh, kind of post up and you know store your clothes and have a good time. But I don't know. I'm I'm too old now. <laughs> you know, and I can understand. Good, good family and uh, kids trying to raise. You know, I think uh, it uh, just wasn't for me. You know, um, it's. It has its stuff, but I just think that, you know, like everything in life, there's always two really good things, just not good for each other. And I think that was just how me and Vegas was. Right on. Just, uh, just, just wasn't, my, uh, wasn't my forte. Family first. Definitely, most definitely. So you've been tattooing for quite a while now. Um, where did you get your start? Uh, I've been tattooing now 20 years. Uh, it'll be 21 years uh, this November. Um, got my start in uh, southwest Detroit, Michigan. Um, my hometown, you know, and just, uh, it'll always be home, but, uh, just, that's just uh, like that journey song. where I got my start from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you, uh, did you have a traditional apprenticeship where you are, are you self-taught? No, I had a straight up traditional hardcore apprenticeship, you know, kind of the whole karate kid, you know, thing where you're doing shit and wondering what the hell does this have to do with anything with tattooing? And, you know, the answer was always, uh, it'll make you a better tattooer. You know, uh, you know, going from mowing lawns and, you know, going grocery shopping and picking dude guys up from the bar at two, three o'clock in the morning and drop them off. And, you know, like, uh, you know, it was uh, it was probably about a, I'd say a good year and a half before they ever let me even touch a tattoo machine. You know, I had uh, it was uh, it was pretty grueling. You know, I mean, I'm thankful and appreciating and grateful for everything that, uh, you know, went into it. I think uh I think that's what a lot of the industry now is really lacking, you know, um, is uh, that good old school hardcore apprenticeship of being able, you know, there's some things that, you know, I think people really miss out on, um, you know, being able, being taught that way. Yeah, there's a little, a little bit of ass kicking missing from uh, tattoo. People <laughs> uh, people might be did getting I not, a little I, soft, you know. I Not only did you get the ass kicking, but literally you got an ass <laughs> kicking. There was, uh, you, you know, like it wasn't just some entitlement, you know, that, you know, well, I've been, you know, I've been apprenticing for three months, so, you know, I should own my own shop now, you know, like, <laughs> I remember, I, I remember this one time, uh, I, I questioned them about, like, uh, I auto, uh, scrubbed a bunch of tubes and autoclaved them, and, you know, he ripped them all out of the bag and was like, uh, do them over again, and I was like, oh, what, what the hell for, you know, I'm like, dude, I just, I cleaned them, they were good, you know, and he was like, he's like, you just do it, you don't ask. And I was like, well, what, what, is, what does that matter? And he was like, you know what? You're right. Go home for a week. Oh, shit. And, dude, and it broke my heart, man. I was bummed out. You know, like, I was like, oh, my God, did I just mess up my opportunity? You know, I was, uh, I was so sad. And, and you know, they, uh, it was like, like a week later, you know, and uh, he called me up. He's like, you ready to come back in? And I was like, yeah, man. Uh, was, you know, he left me back and he's like, uh, just don't ever question, man. He's like, you know, the, what I'm trying to instill into you is, uh, you know, not to be lazy, you know, uh, you know, if something needs to be done, you might not want to do it. You just got to do it. And I was like, well, shit, you couldn't have just told me that message. You know, <laughs> you didn't have to fucking, you know, like ground me or nothing. He's like, yeah, I did. You know, it just shows that you wanted it. You know, if it affects you that much, it just shows you where your passion and your heart really truly lies. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of those kind of, and, well, kind of you, my moments throughout my uh, you, apprenticeship. You have a very vivid memory of that. So uh, apparently it, oh, it worked. It worked really very well. There's so many times, like, and, you know, I'm back in my apprenticeship, I was, you know, when we actually still handmade needles ourselves. And uh, I remember every Sunday was, uh, was needle making day. And, you know, I would try to, you know, make needles for the whole shop. And I remember I had uh, probably about... 150 needles made and uh 
you know, he comes walking by and I was like so happy. It's like, well, you know, maybe I, you know, this should be enough for the week, you know, maybe even two weeks, you know, would be, it'd be good, you know, figure I could maybe take a Sunday off. And he, he walked up and he grabbed him by his hand and he just looked at him all. He's like, oh, okay, cool. And he just went, wham, oh. smashed, <laughs> smashed them all on the table and goes, do them all over again. Oh, shit. And, oh. Yeah, I felt like my heart just shattered. <laughs> I was like, fuck, really? <laughs> So uh, yeah, all right. you want to tell us who this guy was, or do you want to keep it a secret? No, no, I, I apprenticed under a guy named Chuck Gruel. Oh, okay, uh, he's, uh, he was uh, he was uh, he was a pretty awesome guy. Yeah, he was uh, he was the one who really started to open my eyes up to uh, to um, to like tattooing of like the you know like the actual art and respect of it. You know, there was a you know I was young. I I started getting you know I got my first tattoo when I was fifteen. And I started hanging around the tattoo shop, like, you know, a lot when I was, like, 16, 17. And, uh, you know, it was just visually cool to me, you know, just being seeing all the different personalities and the people in there and just the camaraderie that they had in the shop. It would just seem so appealing to me. It just, it's, it seemed like a, like a family or a brotherhood, you know, it was like, you know, it's like me being able to hang out at a bar without being in a bar, you know, it was, it was just cool just to watch the vibe, you know, of how everyone just interacted there. And, uh, it just, it just really drew me to it, you know, in this art form, you know, my, uh, my childhood dream was to be an animator. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to do something with art, but, you know, getting it, you know, hanging out at the tattoo shop, it was, uh, one of those things that, you know, I was like, wow, man, there's, there's, there's something to this, you know, and he really started to educate me about, uh, really what all goes into it, you know, and, and, you know, it didn't have to have some artsy fartsy meaning, but, you know, in a sense, there kind of was. There was a sense of, you know, like a personal, you know, story to oneself. It was really, uh, it was really alluring to me, you know, and I kind of fell into it. Do you? Uh...